What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2009 Audi A4 B8. Today on the B8 behind me, we're going to be covering how to replace your oil pan. A couple of reasons why you may want to do this. One, it could just be leaking. These are glued onto the block and over time that seal can fail. Uh, two, which is pretty common with the cars we see up here where we live is the pan actually starts to rust out. And that's the case on the B8 behind us. It's pretty rusty and it almost looks like you can just poke your finger through the pan. So we're going to go ahead and replace that today, which is why we have a nice new unit. But if you're not replacing your pan and you're just looking to reseal it, this DIY will also be applicable. This is going to be applicable to most cars with the two liter turbo. Um, of course, the way of the engine placement on your vehicle may be a little bit different than what we're working on today, but the general idea will be the same. The kit that we have in front of us is available on fcpo.com. It includes the new pan, the hardware, a couple seals, the gasket maker, we're using the Permatex Ultra Black, and an oil change kit as well. If you're not gonna be replacing your pan, you can still rob most of the hardware out of this kit. Just be sure to add a drain plug. Our new pan already comes with a drain plug installed, so we do not need to get one separately. Added to this kit and also linked below in the description is going to be some hardware that you're going to want to replace while you're doing this DIY. A lot of these bolts are stretch bolts, so they're one-time use. Those will also be linked there for you as well. But before we get started on this job, let's take a look at some of the tools we're going to need. For this job, you're going to need your basic set of ratchets and extensions. Something that I highly recommend is a ratchet that has a flexible head, like the ones that we have down here on the table. These are going to make your life a lot easier. Along with our extensions, we have some uh, wobble extensions, which have kind of a loose head, which will allow the socket to move around a bit, and a couple different swivels. Um, we're gonna go with a bunch of different T30s for this job, as the amount of room that we have to work with is gonna be uh, limited, and it's gonna vary based on what side of the oil pan we're on. Um, this is a tiny gear wrench ratchet that takes these small bits, which is gonna come in handy. Um, in addition to that, we have a regular stubby T30, a regular size T30, a T55 for our new drain plug, a six millimeter hex for the old style drain plug. We have a T25 for some of our splash shield hardware, a 10 millimeter socket, a 13 millimeter socket, a small rubber mallet to get the oil pan off, a Phillips head screwdriver. This is CTA 9180. This is gonna be helpful for removing our oil filter. And then some nice to haves are some expanding rivet pliers. We have a bungee cord. You can also use zip ties. That'll come in handy when holding our hydraulic lines out of our way. Some brake cleaner. Electric tools always make any job easier. We have an oil funnel. We have an oil catch pan, which is not pictured here. Since we're going to be on the lift, we have some screw jacks, but some floor jacks and or jack stands will come in handy. And then we're going to get as far as we can without using this engine brace here. Um, so hopefully you don't have to use one at home. If we do need to lift the motor up to get the oil pan out, then we will be using this tool. We'll show you how to set it up. It's pretty straightforward. Now we know what tools we're working with. Let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. All right, my good people, the first thing we're gonna start with is gonna be draining our oil. And for that, we're gonna work on removing our oil fill cap and we may as well replace the oil filter while we're up here. Now to do that, we're simply gonna pull the cap off, set it to the side. To get to the oil filter though, you do need to remove this beauty cover if your car's still equipped with it. So we'll go ahead and pop this off first. It just has a couple grommets on here that kind of press fit onto a couple uh, studs on the block and intake. We're just going to go ahead and set this to the side. And now we can pull our oil fill cap. We don't have to worry about anything falling into the fill hole here. You can just rest it like that if you're afraid of anything falling in. I'm going to take our oil filter wrench, our oil filter socket tool. Again, this is CTA 9180 for those of you that skipped through the tools. We're going to use that to break the filter free and remove it. I like to place a towel around the side of the filter housing here, just in case we get any spillage, kind of keep it from running all the way down the block and making a mess of things. And then we can use that towel to kind of cup the filter on the way out. Just using a 3 8 drive ratchet to use this uh, socket removal tool. You don't need the extension, but gives you a little bit better reach. What I'm going to do now, before I get too far, is take my socket tool off. Sometimes those like to get stuck on the oil filter. All right, here's our old oil filter out. 
Now we can take our new oil filter, always apply a little bit of oil to the seal, um, use some fresh oil, doesn't hurt to clean up any spillage around the housing here if you have any, house looks pretty good. And with that situated, we're just going to go ahead and install the new filter now and just knock that out of the way. And we're just going to make this hand tight. We don't really need to gorilla this on. Usually these type of filters, once you snug them up, another quarter turn or so is all they take. All right, good people, we are under the A4. We're going to work on draining the oil. We're going to remove the whole uh, belly pan splash shield assembly here um, just because we're going to be working on removing the oil pan itself. Now, this car is not the best example of what hardware holds this in place. We have T25s, we have T30s, we have uh, Phillips head screws. So just bear that in mind when you get underneath your car. Take a quick look before you get comfortable so you know which hardware you need to remove it. This car has seen uh, quite a bit of different pieces of hardware. So we have two big plastic expanding rivets, one on either side of the back here that I'm gonna start with, and then we'll move to the hardware. have a couple T25s back here. One, two, third one in the middle. Just be mindful there can be debris inside of these shields so you don't want anything to fall on your face or in your eyes. And we have a Phillips right here. These are one of those half twist screws we can take this back shield off and set it to the side. And now we can work on getting this front one off the rest of the way, which is held in by the quarter turn Phillips. Or you can use a flathead on them as well. All right, now that we have our splash shield off, we have a much better view of our rusty, crusty, and also leaking oil pan. So just check off all the boxes on why this needs to be replaced. We're going to start by removing our drain plug and draining the oil. So let's do that now. All right, my good people, we are under the A4. Again, we're gonna work on draining the oil first. We have our six millimeter hex equipped on our ratchet. We have our pan situated so that the angle will, so that the angle of the oil will be caught and then it'll slowly center itself back underneath the pan. And again, we have the oil fill cap off just to allow it to breathe, break that vacuum seal. It lets everything flow a little bit easier. All right, we're gonna give that as much time as it needs to drain. And while we're working on that, we're also gonna work on removing the three 10 millimeter nuts uh, that hold our oil level sensor in place. That's gonna have to come down in order for you to be able to pull the oil pan out sideways. So once this is mostly drained and dripping, we'll work on removing the sensor and let them drip for a little bit. All right, my good people, before we work on removing our oil level sensor, we're gonna try to tackle as much as we can uh, so we avoid having too many spots dripping oil at us. So what I mean is I'm going to throw my oil drain plug back in for now. It is pretty much fully drained. This is going to be dripping throughout the whole process with the oil pan on, off. So just be prepared for that. But for now, we're just going to throw this in back in by hand. Move this catch pan for just a moment. And now we're going to work on freeing up the transmission lines that run up here in front of the oil pan. We're going to use a bungee cord to kind of hold them off to the side. But there is a 10 millimeter bolt that holds the lines in front of our block here. So we're going to work on undoing that first. And just be sure to follow your lines around and making sure that there's no other um, 10 millimeter nuts or bolts securing these lines in place. From what I could see, we just have the one up front and then the lines are loose going all the way around. So 10 millimeter socket, wrench, whichever one you have lying around. Go ahead and remove the little 10 millimeter bolt up here. Ten millimeter bolt is out. And now that's gonna give us some play here in the lines. And we're just simply gonna bungee cord them from somewhere here and wrap them on this driver's side of the car. All right, something like that should be okay for now. If we need to, we can add a second bungee cord or a zip tie and kind of move them out a little bit more, but this will do for now. Now that we have that situated, the next thing we're gonna do is just take a look at the pan. We're gonna have to use a different combo of T30s to get this oil pan out. And by different combo, I mean different sizes. 
For some, they're super accessible. There's 20 of them that you can get with an extension. Some you may be able to get with a swivel and some you may need to go super stubby. There is a anchor point on the top of the block, which you can use to raise up the motor a bit if you need to do that, uh, depending on the tools that you're working with. We can highlight that for you up there. We may need to do that ourselves here. So we're gonna take a quick look, see which sizing is gonna work for what, and then we'll pick it back up with removing this oil level sensor and going from there. All right, my good people, at this point, we have a solid game plan on how we're gonna remove our oil pan, but there's a couple things I wanted to talk to you about um, before we continue and getting too far ahead. These cars were equipped with an electronic power steering rack or a mechanical steering rack, a hydraulic, depending on what year your car was. This car has a hydraulic rack. The rack itself is a bit thinner and smaller than the electronic uh, portion that would sit here on the later cars. So for us, we're not gonna work on removing the rack. However, we're gonna give you the torque specs for the hardware. Same thing with the X-Brace. On the electronic equipped cars, you're gonna wanna remove this X-Brace so that you have room to drop down your power steering rack. So we'll cover all the torque specs on that. Another thing to keep in mind is depending on the tools you have, you may need to remove this sway bar. They're just lower it out of the way. You have two 13 millimeter nuts on either end. Just be sure that when you retighten the sway bar, the, or the sway bar brackets, the car is at ride height. So you're not binding up the bushings. And the torque spec for those two 13 millimeter nuts are gonna be 25 Newton meters. If you are dropping your steering rack, you have two 21 millimeter bolts. These are torque to yield bolts, so they are to be replaced every time you remove them. And those are gonna be torqued to 80 Newton meters plus 180 degrees. For these back X-brace bolts, you're gonna to wanna to replace these as well as they are one time use. You have a total of six, and those are gonna to be torqued to 90 Newton meters plus 135 degrees. Uh, one more thing to mention here is again, we're gonna avoid removing any of these items just because we're equipped with a mechanical rack and we're able to squeeze in our tools without removing them. Another tip, if you're lacking the space to work and maybe you are keeping the rack in place like we are, another thing you can do is lift the engine from up top using the anchor point, which we'll also highlight and we'll show you how that's gonna look. Um, if we need to, we'll do that, but I think we should be able to work with the space that we have here. And if we need to, we can always remove the sway bar. It's just a quick two 13 millimeter bolts on either bracket. So you get the idea, work at it however you want. As you can see, we still have the oil level sensor in place and that's merely just to avoid drippage while we're working on removing the T30s. That's gonna take two seconds for us to get off. So without further ado, we're gonna tackle the pain in the butt T30s in the back first, and then we'll re reward ourselves with the easy to reach ones and the oil level sensor. So let's get into it. We're gonna start with the pain in the butt T30s first in the back. The tightest one here is gonna be this one right above the subframe. I'm using a stubby T30 on a quarter inch ratchet. And we're just gonna work on breaking it free. But our main goal here is to make sure that the T30 bit is fully seated. And this is a flex head ratchet. So it makes a huge difference versus using a fixed head. Um, highly recommend it. Okay, well, I don't know if you could see that, but this T30 was almost finger loose. So maybe someone's been in here before. Um, it looks a little chewed up. Some of these look a little chewed up. Either way, that made life a lot easier. Uh, but again, you can see how tight of a fit it is. So if that is not gonna work for you, you can use an alternative, which is something like this tool, which we showed you at the beginning with a small ratcheting head. It's like a flex head wrench with a T30 bit. So there's a couple ways to get to these. I'll just work on getting this one out first. All right, that's one out. We're gonna work on this back one here next. All right, and then for whatever ones I can get to, I'm just gonna use my electric impact if possible. Of course, making sure that the bit is situated first. We're switching over to a 3 8 drive ratchet with an adapter to a one quarter inch. So we have the girth from the 3 8 drive ratchet to break this T30 free. Okay. Oh yeah. The 3 8 ratchet had the bit of power that we needed there to break that free. I'm gonna use the electric ratchet to zap it out. Wonderful. We're gonna continue on with these bolts. Again, we're 
equipped with a mechanical rack, so we have some wiggle room between the subframe and the rack to get our small extension through. Uh, so we're gonna work on these next three pin in the butt bolts. Again, it's not a bad idea to drop the sway bar to act as a one right above it if you're having trouble getting to it. Two 13 millimeter nuts on either side. Make sure you tighten them back up at right height if you do drop that. So in order to give ourselves a little bit more room, these uh, bolts up top of the subframe are a real pain in the butt. I'm thinking to myself, if I'm having such a hard time getting them out, getting them in is gonna be just as hard. So we're just gonna take advantage of our patience here and take off both of the 13 millimeter nuts on either bracket, drop that bar down, and hopefully we have a more direct angle at that T30. All right, that's gonna allow us to drop that a bit more. And now we should have a more direct shot at those T30s, which will help us for removal and install. We're gonna reward ourselves and disconnect our sensor now while we're here. You just have a regular small tab, you press it. It's easier to push the connector in and then pull it back out. And for now, we'll just tuck it up while we're out of the way. We're gonna stop here on this side. These are all very easy to get to. Let's hop over to the driver's side and tackle the last tough ones over there. And then we can reward ourselves with removing our sensor, which is easy to get to, and the last T30s. All right, for this next one, which would be the following hole after the farthest corner T30 going towards the front on the driver's side. We're gonna go with a quarter inch ratchet and a regular T30. Um, we have just enough room. Again, this our flex head. These are a must for doing this job. It'll allow us to get on the bolt properly and the flex head will allow us to have somewhere to swing the ratchet to to break it free. All right, now all the easy ones we can get to no problem. We're just gonna work on breaking them all free. And then we will go around with the electric impact and zap them out after we get our oil sensor out. It's nice to start with the pain in the butt ones because then you can reward yourselves by just doing the easy ones last. And again, we did this without lifting the motor. If you have the tool to lift the motor, then definitely do that. It's gonna give you a lot more room to work with, but we're trying to keep it as realistic as possible here. Now we're gonna remove the three 10 millimeter nuts that hold the sensor in place. Be prepared to have some oil drip out of there. And we have three new nuts that come with our kit as well as a new seal. Now we have our oil level sensor out. We're gonna zap out the rest of these T30s and then we're gonna grab a rubber mallet and give the pan a little whack and we should be able to drop it. All right, my good people, now we're gonna grab a rubber mallet, give this pan a little bit of a hit, and it should break it free. We have a catch pan situated below. I'm just gonna stick a finger in here and kinda grab onto it. So at this point, my good people, you can see the pan is bottoming out between the subframe and the housing inside for the oil pickup, the oil pump, all that good stuff. So. We tried it without raising the block. Again, most people are not gonna have tools at home to support the block or lift it out, but if you do, just make sure you have it handy. So we gave it a shot without it. Now we're gonna set up the bridge across the fenders, raise up the engine a little bit, and that'll give us enough room to weasel this pan out. So stay tuned. All right, we're back up top of things here. We're in the engine bay of the A4. We have our brace set up on the stiffest parts of the strut tower. We're gonna get this to hook up onto our bracket and we're just gonna get a couple millimeters up. That'll give us all the room we need to get our oil pan out. All right, we got a couple turns there. Our goal is not to rip the engine mounts, just simply to stretch them out a little bit. 
So now with that, let's hop back underneath the A4 and wiggle that pan out. All right, we are back underneath. We have our engine supported up. We threw in one bolt just so that the oil pan wouldn't fall out in case this is enough room, which I think it's gonna be. And now we can drop it. And we're gonna kinda come out towards the driver's side over here. That's why we have a catch pan situated. And if you're like me, don't forget there is a little uh, rubber grommet going into the oil pan that holds uh, a wire in place. We missed that one, that's my bad. We're gonna pop that free real quick. What a pain in the butt. So key thing to take away from here, it's, it's gonna come out towards the driver's side. Uh, what I highly recommend is after you clean up your surfaces, practice putting on the pan without any silicone. That way you can get a good feel about how it's gonna go back in. The last thing you wanna do is smudge up all the silicone and give yourself a leak um, when you install everything together. So we're gonna take some time. We're gonna clean up our mating surfaces here, wipe down as much of the oil as we can. Uh, we'll grab a green scotch bite to get any of the old gasket off. And then we'll show you how to prep the pan with some new sealant and put it back together. All right, my good people, we're at the workbench. We have our oil pan just cleaning up the edges, even though this one's a new one uh, with a little bit of brake clean. We did do a couple test fits onto the block, so we got a little bit of oil on there, but it's nice and clean. If you're using your oil pan, be sure to use a cookie wheel or a light wire wheel around the edge to get all the old glue off. It's okay if it chews up the surface of the metal a little bit. If anything, that'll give the sealant a little bit better of a bite. Today we're gonna go with the Ultra Black, which is part of our kit. I'm gonna work on piercing it. And then we'll give it a shot using the tip. I don't typically use these, but I've cut it to a decent opening so that we can run a nice speed around this pan. Make sure you go inside of the bolt holes, not on the outside. And then uh, do your best to kind of keep it nice and even. Uh, between an eighth of an inch and so for the thickness of the of the seal and then once it goes back on the block it's going to smush down and flatten out a little bit all right my good people it's no picasso but it will certainly seal so with that let's head back over to the a4 we have about a five minute working window here and we'll have two bolts handy so that we can, once we get it in place, uh, just kind of hold it up gently and then we'll work our way around. If you have a second set of hands available to you, this is the time to grab them now. There's no shame in having a second person help you hold this in place while you get some bolts started. And we're making sure there's no oil on our sealing surface. Sometimes that will, you'll get a few drips in the time that it takes you to prep the pan. So if that's the case, just go back, a little brake clean or degreaser if you have it and wipe it clean, no problem. All right, my good people, we're good to rock. I'm gonna get in position, get the pan into place, and then Mark's gonna do one bolt on either side of the pan for us, just to roughly get it situated, and then we can work our way around to torquing them out all down properly. That wasn't as dramatic as I thought it was gonna be. So now I'm just gonna quickly work my way around and get them all just finger tight. Then we're gonna to torque all of them as best as we can to eight Newton meters plus an additional 45 degrees. So there's gonna be some that we're just not gonna be able to get to with a torque wrench. We're gonna do our best using the old calibrated wrist. It's not a lot of torque, so don't go too crazy. All right, my good people, now we have them all started by hand. We have them finger snug. Uh, the goal here is just gonna go to work around and do our best to torque them to eight Newton meters plus an additional 45 degrees. So do your best. We're basically gonna replicate what we just did using a torque wrench. Again, if you're using swivels and you're at an angle, the torque is gonna be improper. Um, since the torque is so low, 
We might do some of these back hard to reach ones by hand and just use the uh, old calibrated wrist. Uh, we'll pick it back up in just a moment, but give yourself about half an hour of set time before you even think about putting oil back in it. Um, we have enough things to put back together that that'll eat up most of our time. So let's pick it back up with a torque wrench. We can also go ahead and install our new oil level sensor now that all the T30s are torqued down. And I apologize in advance, I miscounted. I thought there was 20 of them. There's only 19. So we got 19 locked and loaded. We're gonna feed our sensor in with our new seal. The sensor has a small channel in it for the seal. It just goes on. There's no right or wrong way. Just make sure the electrical connectors facing the right way. It's gonna look something like this. We have three new nuts. You can reuse your nuts. Just make sure you torque them down to 10 Newton meters. And you can go ahead and plug it back in while you're here. Okay. All right, my good people. Now we're going to go ahead and reinstall our sway bar brackets. I have a screw jack under each end of the front control arms. I'm gonna lower the car to set it to ride height and then we'll torque these nuts down to 25 Newton meters. For those of you following along at home, you can replicate this using jack stands. Set one under each arm, get your floor jack situated in the middle right here, and then you can lift it up, set the jack stands, and then lower them down on the jack stands until you have about a ride height gap between the wheel and the fender. So I'm just gonna get these started by hand first before I lower the car down. I'll just get the brackets in place. All right, with our car at ride height, we're gonna snug these up and then we'll torque them down to 25 Newton meters. Again, two 13 millimeter nuts. All right, with that, I'm gonna get rid of the screw jacks and then we're gonna work on resecuring our cooler lines. So let's do that now. All right, I'm gonna cut off, I added a zip tie from the lines to the belt just as extra leverage while I had the old pan out. So that gave us a lot of room to sneak our new pan in. So you may find different ways to get that situated, whatever works best for you. It's just as long as it's out of your way. And then we'll take our bungee cord off. Then we'll take our 10 millimeter bolt and we'll line up our two halves here. Each line has its individual tab. Line those up together. Then we're just gonna go ahead and snug it up. I'm gonna take a lot of torque. Just once it's snug, it's gonna be good. That's nice and snug. And if you haven't already, don't forget to resecure your little uh, electronic cable that has your little yellow tab on it that goes on the side of the oil pan. Now we're going to reinstall our splash shield. Again, our car has a mishmash of hardware. So just be sure you have your tools ready to rock and roll. I'm going to start with the front piece first. Feed that underneath the uh, front lip here. And then we'll get our hardware situated afterwards. All right, now we can take our back shield, join it up with the front one. We have two 25s for the rest of it. All right, my good people, with that, the underneath of the A4 is buttoned up. So let's head back up top, fill this bad boy with some oil, and wrap up this DIY. All right, my good people, back up top, we're going to work on removing our bridge here that's supporting our engine up. So we can get rid of this. We can lift it up. And move it out of our way. And now we can go ahead and set up our oil funnel now. We get our CTA funnel in here. And then we'll get our five liters of 5W40. And don't forget the five liter jugs of liquid molly have a label on them that you can use to set your next mileage interval for the next time you gotta do an oil change. We already did our filter at the beginning, if you remember.
we can go ahead and reinstall our oil fill cap. And then we can put our beauty cover back on if we have it. And then make sure you run your car, my good people, check for any leaks. But otherwise, this is gonna conclude this DIY for today. Overall, not a terrible job on the BAA4. Again, this car had a mechanical hydraulic uh, steering rack, so it made things a little bit different um, versus having the electric rack. And if you're looking on how to drop the electronic steering rack, be sure to check out our BAS4 clutch DIY where we show you how to drop it and reinstall it. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave those in the comment section below. And if you like this DIY and you want to see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.